What's up guys? I want to do a quick efficient review on this 3D printer right here. It is the FL Sun Super Racer. Now I'm making this review thinking that a lot of people that are watching this video are probably wondering, should I buy this printer? And I just want to come from that perspective and give you some advice on whether or not I think you should buy this printer. So if this is your very first 3D printer, let me just give you a little warning. In my humble opinion, I think most 3D printers end up just sitting on a shelf collecting dust because we buy them for entertainment and we have fun with them, play with them for a couple months, and then they just kind of get old and we never use them again. Maybe once a year when we need some little plastic part, and, oh yeah, I could 3D print that. But that's just my opinion of what normally happens with 3D printers. So keeping that in mind, the two things to be aware of with this printer is that it's really big and it's relatively expensive. So as you can see, this takes up a lot of room on this shelf here. And if you're not really using it, that's a lot of real estate that you may not have. The other thing is you can get a fully capable 3D printer that can pretty much do most of the stuff this one can do. Maybe not as fast, but it can do a lot of those things and it'll only run you a couple hundred bucks. So you get two of those for less than this guy. I'll put a link in the description to the Vox Lab Aquila, which is basically an Ender 3 version two clone. You could also get an Ender 3 version one that's gonna be around 200, but those machines are gonna be able to do most of the stuff this guy can do. So I just wanna make sure you're aware of that. If this is your first time buying a 3D printer, just something to think about. Now, I'm gonna go over just with some warnings, a little bit of gripes I have about this machine, and then I'll get into all the cool, awesome features I have. You know, just to cut quick to the chase, I would recommend this machine. I do really like this machine. It's not perfect, but it's really cool. Big gripe I have with this is it's supposed to print fast. I mean, that's the name, Super Racer. And people are gonna print PLA, PETG. The other stuff you may or may not print, but those are the two main plastics that you're gonna print. Now, the thing with PETG is it needs to be printed at a higher temperature. And if you're gonna print fast, you need to be at a really high temperature because as the plastic goes through the hot end, it will melt as it's going through. But if you're gonna push that plastic through a lot faster, because there's less time for it to melt, you need the hot end to be hotter. And this is not an all metal hot end. What it comes with, it has a PTFE tube, a Teflon tube in there. And with Teflon, I think it's like 240 degrees Celsius. Maybe it's 250, somewhere around there. It can get a little dangerous because it can off gas and those fumes can be toxic apparently. And I'm not gonna risk that, but in order to print PETG fast, you're not gonna be able to get this thing hot enough in a safe way. So my gripe is, is like right away, you're having to do work. You're gonna have to swap out, like I did, the regular hot end it comes with, with an all metal hot end. And I also put in this uh, Capricorn Bowden tube here, just to ensure that I don't have to worry about that at all. The other thing is it only gets up to 260 degrees. And in my humble opinion, with some PETGs, to get the full capacity out of this machine, you need to go hotter than that. So you'd have to change the firmware or do another modification to be able to get the full use out of this machine. So that's just a gripe I have. Now when it comes to printing PLA, yes, you can print it and you can print it faster than you could on the other machines that you see I have here. But that's about it. You know, so it really depends on your wants and needs. If you wanna print flexible TPU filaments, then this isn't gonna be the machine for you. As cool as it looks and as it is, I just am not able to print it, you know. Maybe some really stiff stuff, but not like the Ninja Flex, where I can do that on all the other machines I have here because they're a direct drive system. And this is a Bowden style and it's just, just the way it is. You just, I couldn't make it happen. At least not uh, quickly, that's for sure. And not with any, reasonable quality. So the other like gripe or thing that I just really wanna make sure you understand what you're getting into with this machine is that it is a lot of work. So it's newer and with any new machine, there's not a lot of resources out there to help you. Hey, if you run into this problem, here's a good solution that we found. You know, I use Cura and the Prusa Slicer, but even just getting the correct presets in there, it's like there, there really isn't that many presets out there and it's a one trick pony. Like, hey, you can print PLA, but if you're gonna to try to do anything intricate, like I was mentioning with PETG, like it's gonna be on you to do a lot of the work and tinkering. And I'm just speaking from personal experience. Like the reason I have 3D printers, I have a little print farm because I basically sell this guy online. 
And I know this looks super simple. It's actually a two part piece. This goes on the inside here. This is actually really hard to print. I'll probably make a video explaining like all the little things that make this so difficult to print. But it took me more time and energy to make this be able to print this guy than it did on my other machines. And my idea was, oh, it's super racer. I'm gonna be able to print it faster. I am printing it faster on this machine than the other ones, but it took a ton of work and I'm not even hitting the full potential. I've pretty much given up knowing, you know, what's it gonna take me an extra two weeks to be able to get it to print a little bit faster, tinkering with all the settings that are involved. Um, this is PETG plastic. And again, I could spend 30 minutes just going on and on about that. But my point is, it's not like, oh, you're just gonna buy this and it's gonna print super fast. That wasn't the case for me at least. You're gonna have to do work to get the full potential out of this machine. And with that being said, I feel like if you are the person who's buying this machine to print toys, you probably are better off going a different route. But if you're buying this machine because the machine's the toy and that's what you have fun playing with and tinkering and modifying and all that, then yeah, this is a pretty cool machine because not only does it come with most of the bells and whistles, you know, you've got auto bed leveling, that's huge. The filament runout sensor, auto recovery if you lose power. The fact that it is linear rails, that this is carbon fiber with magnets that have these like tension springs there. Like this is an amazing Delta at an amazing price. You can't argue the value you're getting but it depends on how you value things. If you're valuing the actual hardware, like, oh, we've got metal, carbon fiber, like all the components put together, yeah, it's a steal, it's great, buy it immediately. But that's only half of 3D printing in my personal opinion. The other half is the community, the ease of use, how much work you have to do to be able to use the machine. I think that's why Prusa can charge so much for their machine is, you know, it's probably as plug and play as you're possibly gonna get when it comes to 3D printing, where these other ones just take work with modifications and tinkering and figuring things out. So I just wanted to make sure you kind of fully understood what you got yourself into before making a purchase. So I think I've covered most things. I'll go ahead and list on the screen right now all the features that it has, because it does have a lot of features, and on paper this machine looks awesome. But the point I'm trying to make is, you're gonna do the same stuff on this machine as you would with other machines, especially PETG. I don't think you're really gonna be able to get that extra speed benefit out of it. When it comes to PLA, you are gonna be able to print a little bit faster and it shouldn't be too much work, but it is gonna cost you quite a bit of money when you could get this for less than half the cost. So just know that that extra little speed Unless like you're in a situation like me where you're like actually printing stuff to sell. It's really not that big of a deal when it comes to 3D printing. If you would get frustrated with trying to print something and having to go back and do it again and tinker and change some settings, then you might not have the best experience with this. You could spend less than half the money and get a Vox Lab Aquila or Ender 3, which is gonna be able to do everything this can do, just a little bit slower and maybe parts that are not as big. Other than that though, I can't recommend the machine enough. Super high quality parts. Um, it does a phenomenal job. I do notice the tolerances are not as good in terms of uh, basically I print this part and it's got very tight tolerances. And I've noticed that I had to like actually shrink it a little bit for the inside one to make it fit properly. Um, just cause I don't think it like printed the uh, part with like the perfect accuracy but for most stuff you're printing like if you're printing i don't know a toy for your kid or a teddy bear like it's, it's gonna be more than enough but if you're like an engineer and need something super precise with precision just be aware of that i think that's common with a lot of deltas but yeah i'm really impressed i do want to make sure i come off saying that i would highly recommend this i do think it's amazing all right so i hope you got some value out of this video if you're new to 3d printing check for the videos in the description. One, I kind of just go over all the terminology with 3D printers that I think is where you need to start if you're shopping for a 3D printer. And then I also give my recommendation for the top five 3D printers that I think you should buy. Um, I'll link those down below. As I'm sure you know, if you like, comment, or subscribe, it helps me out and all that good stuff. I'd appreciate it if you do so. And if not, no worries either. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.